we've been here a long time, and I, I want to open up with a song, and it's going to be some vibe connected to what I'm going to share today. I've spent about 10 years studying about these colored soldiers and where they were traveling. We who believe in freedom cannot rest. We who believe in freedom cannot rest until it comes. We who believe in freedom cannot rest. Oh, we who believe in freedom cannot rest until it comes. This is all kind of depicts what was going on in Quindaro. And from the beginning of time, and the beginning of it becoming a territory, and Native Americans coming in, and we're going to talk about these three groups of people that established a place of freedom. Um, and of course, I'm going to speak of my, my cultural heritage uh, coming across the river. Um, I'm right now living in St. Joseph, Missouri, but I was from Kansas City, Missouri, born and raised. And I wasn't taught this history. So I had to learn the history and then to teach it to my students. So as we go through this, I want to share um, the major focus, which is how it became titled the, uh, A Bundle of Sticks. And we're going to kind of combine all these thoughts together because you've heard of all of these uh, very important uh, characters in the role of Quindaro becoming who it was and who it is now, even as a uh, city, Kansas City, Kansas. Um, there is strength in unity, and I believe that's kind of like what you see on the pictures and the, the uh, program for today, but it comes from this, this name, Quindaro. So, um, this is a scripture, of course, and you can read it and just connect to what it's saying. But here are the three groups. You have the Native Americans, the African Americans, and then you have the European settlers. Of course, we know those are our abolitionists. Um, the spirit of it. So why, why are we coming together? Why is this important? Because not only were these Native Americans finding their home, new home, why not, um, in this area, but now comes these other people trying to find freedom. And I believe seriously it's the spirit of the Native Americans that started this chain of reaction. All of these people coming together and eventually setting the stage for a place of freedom. Of course, we know that her name means Bundle of Sticks. We probably heard this before, right? Um, the Wyandotte people, though, were, were also people native of the land, but yet they had bought land from Delaware. So just know a little bit about their history, and I think, um, uh, I forget her name, Times, did such an excellent job of giving the history of these groups of people coming, migrating, and the tragedy that happened over time in American history. Native Americans moved from their land consistently, eventually moving to Oklahoma, but they stopped in Kansas, where they were promised all of this land, and eventually, bit by bit, taken away. So, but their spirit is what we're, we're living today in this city, the spirit of these natives. And of course, we know, we've heard an uh, extensive story about her. I won't go into a lot of detail, but only to make uh, certain that we understand her part in the world, to bring up. Um, but a place of refuge is what this became. So when Daryl became this place, and I want to read just a quick quote uh, from a book that I, wrote, I read, and I think the author is here somewhere. She was up here speaking. I don't know if she's left. Um, the Delaware Nations of Indians re residing between Missouri and Kansas rivers, being very anxious to their, their uncles, the Wyandots, settled, and um, they became even more, or donated their grant and quit claim forever to Wyandot Nation. So I had to study this a little bit to understand that these were two townships. As I was studying the color of uh, the colored soldiers and finding their way here, um, there was the Wyandot, which was a township, and then there was Quindale, which we know is the port. But both of them and all of that land was owned by um, Quindale. Okay, I'm going to get back to her later. Okay, so again, we're talking about a place of refuge, um, a place of 
restitution for a lot of the African Americans, and then became recruited. These soldiers were coming right from Kansas, uh, and particularly in Quindaro. Um, I don't know if anyone was here in the audience. It was here about 10 or 12 years ago. There was a play, um, The Story of Quindaro. Okay. Um, it was an excellent, excellent play. It actually kind of fed my fire. Because after watching this play, I realized there's a story that has not been told. And that's what we're here today to do. And, and all of the, the stories are connected. But needless to say, this town begins to grow and, and begins to build. And the heart of it is freedom. Um, I want to move and talk a little bit about the time of these uh, African Americans coming in, of course. I don't know if you all possess the book by um, Jesse Hope, and if you haven't gotten it, I mean, maybe at the museum. Um, and he's not here, I mean, he's already probably at the museum for those that are going to be visiting. But the point is, I was able to purchase that book during the same time of the play. And I was so grateful that I did because I began to learn the ancestors and descendants that came um, and, and those that stayed. Some of them were soldiers, some of them were not. So I'm just building a case. These were some of the African Americans that stayed. Um, the Monroe, uh, maybe you've heard about this, but this particular family came, settled, and, and they were the first African Americans to establish a, a, a business. Um, and through this business, it became a rock area where they were able to build all the structures. And you've heard the story about you know, the booming town of Quindaro. But well, this is where it all begins. And this is where it kind of establishes. Um, these brothers, and actually the father started, came into the town uh, as slaves. The father was a slave, and, they, and eventually um, civil rights, or civil war uh, veterans. And they continued their business. Another, uh, these are all pictures from Jesse Pope's book. So just so uh, whet your appetite, you might want to go get it. Um, he doesn't go through a lot of dialogue, but he does depict the history, which is so very important about this area, about these colored soldiers and African Americans settled. Um, there was another young lady that was here, and I think she had to leave, and she was telling the story about how this was a community of slaves that had, that had escaped. And imagine living in a community of, you know, we're going to have a cohesive unit of a group of people. And then the Native Americans are not very far from you. And the, this, the spirit that's all around the atmosphere, and of course trouble is always lurking. But the point is, is that these people were coming together in unity to build a city. Um, these are other specifics. I won't get into a lot of detail because of time, but um, the Turners, you may have heard their name, and hopefully tomorrow you will get to visit and hear more about them. But the Turners was another family with the pioneers of Kansas City, Kansas, now um, those that were in Quindaro, that is. And so they came as slaves. And then eventually built uh, a life for themselves. And this is the front of the cover of the book. So, but I'll have to say, this is the actual book by um, Jesse Hope III. And again, I'm hoping that he still has copies of it. Because if you want to know the cultural experience of the African Americans and the families that still remain here, you should get this book. So give him a little kudos. And by the way, you all know that he is deceased. I don't know if everybody's aware of that. Okay, so uh, a little of this is going to talk about the story of, I want to move on to talk about how, how it became a place of refuge and then eventually a place of settlement. So these African American soldiers were, were traveling all over, and we do know the story because Diane shared a little bit about the soldiers uh, coming and migrating, and we know about Mr. Lane. Uh, some people, I think in the audience, we had a speaker said he was a little, may have no problems mentally, but he was to say, <laughs> his efforts were, were definitely to our behalf, African Americans, because had he not started in that courageous act of, of, of raging, uh, regiment, raising a regiment, we would not be able to have come this far and to actually be colored soldiers in, in, in the first Kansas and be eventually the second. So, but anyway, th these schools and all that I'm going to show you now is how these people settled and eventually developed this, this Quindaro town into a city. Sorry about that. 
And I think you probably see the picture of this man over here, Berman, um, a very important character in the story of Western University. Um, but again, I think Zarya has shared a lot, a little bit about him, and that he went all the way to U.S. Treasury. I mean, the man was a definite success story. Bishop uh, is what he was, in the Methodist, African Methodist Church. But that wasn't the major thing he accomplished. The major thing he accomplished was a place of joint segregation, because this was after the war, after the war, Civil War. Um, African Americans are now being able to be free and to go to school. Well, there was already a school set up. Of course, we talked a little bit about Korea uh, setting that up, and there were colored schools and white schools. This became the colored school, of course, for African Americans attending uh, after high school. So they went on to go to training school, and there's pictures over here, by the way, and also in the museum if you want to look at more details of that. Um, I'm going to go back and talk a little bit more about a soldier now, just so you've got a big, well, definitely the background of these people, very key people during this time. Um, one of the things I want to talk about is this after the, the soldiers that came, um, and some of them you may have heard of, and I don't know if you know the details, but I want to share a little bit about the Kansas Cavalry. Um, first of all, they found a stopping point in Quindaro. So they had set up all these areas where um, encampment, and of course they were recruiting them by, you know, of course, Lane had been telling them to go and get these, these men. They're just sitting around. They don't have anything to do. Um, most of them had been uh, refugees, and some of them were in camps. And so he says, come, take them, and we're going to train them to be soldiers. And of course, this was a wacky idea for a lot, because they were like, this, do you realize that Lincoln is not going to work with this? You can't take Man, but he did. Um, here is a statement. Although the hazards of the Underground Railroad came to have more stations and carry more passengers into and out of Kansas Territory from 1857 to 1861, new stations were established at Point Darrell, Sumner, Clinton, Oskaloosa, Holton, and other communities. The Kansas Cavalry had found a stopping point into the town of Quindaro, and these ex-slave refugees followed as they came through the, the streets of Quindaro. Here's a New York Times um, insert. I think that we are still, as uh, historians and researchers, are trying to find this evidence of these soldiers, who they were, where their family was, and how, how did they travel. But uh, one of this is one we use at the library, and actually at the museum. Colonel A.C. Davis raised as Calvary were quartered at Quindaro and will probably be mustered out as the order of department um, prohibits any more cavalry. The Kansas Second Colored Mitchell, which is an honor of the conduct. This legislature is in session in Topeka, yet the weather here is cold. And maybe you've heard this before. Snow on the ground, sufficient for sled, out the Missouri River being frozen. Over 70 slaves make a stampede in a few nights ago from Buchanan County, that is in Missouri, near St. Joseph, and crossed to Kansas. And the same time, number arrived lively and lost. General Lane delivered an address before the Mercantile Library Association. And this is where this part comes from. And he's stating that it's important that we send these volunteers and train them to go out to fight for our nation. There's one uh, particular man or soldier that makes his, his, his history in Quindaro. And his name is Private Jackson Donald. He is in the book of uh, this gentleman over here selling it over the, uh, the colored soldiers at the regiment, the first in Kansas. But he was one of the first Kansas colored soldiers. Um, he was uh, quite interesting story, the fact that he was private and that he was a, his slave owner, Robert Donald, from Buchanan County, Missouri. He had, here's an excerpt from the book from Spurgeon, um, Soldiers in the Army of Freedom. Private Jackson Donald was another ex-slave from Missouri who settled in Kansas at war. He had tried to enlist under his master's family name, Donnie. Because he did not know his father's last name, my father was known as James as a slave. 
Donald told the pension officer. And as well as I remember, my father was sold to a man named Walker down near Lexington, Missouri. When I was not more than four years old, after his discharge, Donald lived in Lebanon. And that was a, a definite uh, parallel to these, these men moving back to Lebanon. Of course, some of them born into second cousins, but after that, Buffalo soldiers. In 1866, he attended a celebration in Wendero, Kansas. There he met his father 19 years after they had forcibly been separated. Two years later, Donald moved to Pondero to be closer to his father. So another tale of how these soldiers were coming out of the bondage of slavery in Missouri into this town of Pondero, and it becomes a place of refuge. And in his particular story, it's a, it's, it's a success because not only does he get out of uh, bondage, but he reunites with his father. Um, and then just wrapping up this last uh, bit of information. As soldiers were coming in and out of Kansas, um, it is interesting to tell that they were, some of them may not have been known as abolitionists, and one of them was an African American. Um, he was, of course, um, a colonel. They didn't give him that title at, at first. Um, he was, needless to say, recruited at, and one of them did recruit the African American soldiers, and when he did recruit them, he actually set up a border house. And so the Missouri, a lot of hopefully it was not understood that he was actually harboring slaves because he probably would not have been very successful. But he was able to get these slaves, these African American men, into the border house and then to Quindera. And eventually um, en enlisted as colored soldiers. So I'll leave you with this couple of thoughts that if we are going to make a difference in this, this new move of Cordero with reinventing the history in some ways, bringing all the stories together um, so that we can as a people, and we're talking not only just one culture, but as a people come together. And this is a problem in our nation today. As a bundle of sticks, if we can come together and unite, we that believe in freedom, we can actually rest and not, and not be able to continue in what we've been dealing with even today. This is a problem in our nation again. Um, I will say one last note that uh, a couple of the soldiers that I did read, uh, talk about, and one of them in particular was Jimmy Johnson. And I don't know if anybody knows. Yes, Jimmy Johnson. Um, another one soldier that's gone home, he's no longer with us today, but the story that he left behind was so phenomenal, and I think I have a picture of him. Um, last night, we were there at the library where he actually spoke, and he, the last time I actually saw him in person, let me see if I can find it, it's not coming up, um, Jimmy Johnson was doing a reenactment. He was an actual teacher for Kansas City, um, Kansas Community College. And is that him? Yes, yeah. There he is. Okay, yes, yes. Um, Jimmy Johnson reenacted his actual, um, he's a descendant of a colored, first Kansas colored soldier. And this is him dressed up. And around the picture is my daughter. That's my daughter and my, my sister that we usually do reenactments and conferences together. He um, was reenacting and telling my children the story. Now, at the time, I had no knowledge about what he was talking about. I did not know the story about his grandfather, the archaeological dig, and hopefully you all know about that now. Um, there hasn't been a public publication of it, other than you can find some information on the web. Um, but needless to say, his story is very enriching. His father, named George Washington, crosses, um, leaves his slave, he's in, I believe he's in California. Grandpa, thank you, thank you. His grandfather from Platte County, um, and he no longer wants to be a slave anymore, who would want to be, um, crosses the river and seeks his own freedom. And then joins in to have to become one of the colored, first Kansas colored soldiers. He survives, of course, to tell the story to his, his children, his children and children. And eventually he hears the story. There is a video I do know uh, came out, I've shared it with my students. Um, and he goes in to talk about the archaeological dig, um, and he meets up with his 
slave owner, his great grandfather, great 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 grandfather, this is probably four or five gen five generations, um, slave owner, and he meets their descendants, and they put together this video. So it's very intriguing, but of course he comes through from Daryl, another enriching story of a colored soldier, um, and how he makes it to freedom. But needless to say, all of that told that story, um, he doesn't know who George Washington is when his grandmother brings it up. He says, you do know you have an ancestor named George Washington, right? And he's thinking about the President of the United States. He <laughs> says, no, 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 no. Your great-great-grandfather was a slave. So uh, these stories have to be told, not only for uh, uh, enrich our community, but our children's children need to hear these stories. They need to understand why Point Derrick was called the bundle of sticks, that it wasn't just the African Americans, but it was the Native Americans, as well as the abolitionists, and their spirit and their fervency that brought these people together. And today we are sitting in the place where they would have been running for freedom. So we who believe in freedom, let's not rest until it comes. <laughs>